Hey guys, Abel here. Welcome to this short video podcast today. And we have a really cool topic to talk about, which is about junk volume. And it's going to be pretty short, but there are some interesting stuff which I think would be interesting to discuss. So um, junk volume is something that has been discussed on this channel before and also in the evidence-based fitness community as a whole. And as of some recent publications that came out and also just some interesting discussions that I had with some really intelligent individuals, some of these notions have been put to question quite a bit. So just to get you up to speed in case you're not sure what I'm talking about, junk volume basically refers to this phenomenon by which we are not just in the gym to do work for the sake of doing it. We are not just there to move our muscles through space just for, just for the sake of doing it, but we are actually there to stimulate our muscles to elicit a certain adaptation, which in my case, and probably in a lot of your cases as well, is muscle growth. And this stimulus has to be of A, sufficient specificity. So you need to be certain things, uh, need to be doing certain exercises, and just need to train in a certain way to actually elicit the adaptations you're looking for. B, it needs to be of a certain magnitude. So you need to train at least at a sufficiently high level of training intensity. And then C, it also needs to be of sufficient duration. So your muscles need to be under tension for long enough to actually elicit the response you're looking for. So this really just refers to the total volume you're doing. Um, now, how does the concept of junk volume factor into this? Well, it doesn't really factor into specificity because you're just going to select certain exercises and you're just going to train in a certain way and you're going to design your split in a given way to train for muscle growth. So it doesn't really come into play there. When it comes to the duration of the training, it doesn't necessarily come to play there either because you are definitely looking for a certain amount of volume at least to elicit growth. And it's also been documented pretty well that volume is a really critical factor, possibly the critical factor in terms of how much muscle you're going to grow. Can that volume be too much? Well, so far, uh, my default response would have been a definite yes. My ballpark figure so far as for the maximal amount of sets that you would be doing in a given session would have been three to four sets per session per muscle group. And over that, you're just better off moving your subsequent exercises and sets to another session. The question, of course, is why? And here is where the magnitude comes into play. And basically the rationale behind capping your volume within a single session at a certain point would have been that when you fatigue yourself within a given session too much, you're basically going to be just acutely too fatigued to elicit sufficient adaptations in that training session, simply because the quality of your workout and your sets is just going to be too low. And quality in this case just simply refers to the weight, the absolute loads you will be able to use and the reps you're going to be able to perform with a given load. So you could just be finding yourself in situations where, whereas normally you could be squatting 150 kilos for eight reps. Now, because of the acute fatigue, maybe you're only squatting 80 kilos for eight reps. Now, what were some of the real life applications of this thought process? Well, for example, things like recommending higher training frequencies as opposed to cramming in all of your volume within one single session. And the idea was that if you're doing something like a really hardcore leg day when you're doing squats and then leg presses and then hex squats, by the time you would get to the hex squats, you will be just so fatigued that the weights you will be able to use for that last exercise are just going to be baby weights compared to your normal capabilities. Hence the terminology junk volume. Or maybe doing certain things to just enhance your strength, even if you're purely training for muscle growth only, because maybe by getting stronger and being able to lift higher absolute loads, you will be able to expose your muscles to more mechanical tension, and that will also help you to grow more. Now, some things that challenge these notions are the new study, for example, by Brett Schoenfeld that came out on the 45 sets per week study. Uh, I did a video on that not long ago on the channel. If you haven't seen that, I would recommend it. If you just uh, type in my name and 45 sets, then you will find it on YouTube. But basically my message with that video was, is that that study was a classic case study in terms of how to cram in a ton of quote unquote junk volume, if there is such a thing, into a single session. They were just doing a ton of sets for a given muscle group within a given session. They were using short rest periods. They were reducing the weight in between sets. So by the time they were conceivably, by the time they were getting to their last sets, they were probably using much lower weights than what their normal general capabilities would have been. So if you were to write a manual on 
how not to design a training program to avoid having a lot of junk volume in that, then you could just reference this study directly because that is a perfect way to do that. Now, as we all know, or probably a lot of you know, not only did the participants of this study not suffer the deleterious effect of doing a ton of volume within a given session, but they actually made excellent gains. So this study sort of refutes the idea of there being some such a thing as junk volume kind of directly. Now, some other things that refute this notion are the studies that showed similar growth with really high rep work. So we're doing sets of 30 or even higher reps being equally effective as heavy sets of six to 10. And how is that possible? Well, it is possible because by the time you're getting to the end of a 30 rep set, you're able to put high levels of mechanical tension on the muscle because of that acute fatigue. So once again, this speaks against the idea of there being such a thing as junk volume. So it could actually be that as long as your muscles are under load enough or under tension enough, and as long as you're just soaking the muscles into really high levels of mechanical tension for a sufficient duration, then basically the quote unquote quality of the work doesn't really matter that much. Quality in this case being the amount of weight you're able to lift and the amount of reps you're able to perform with a given weight. Now, the question is what could be some real life applications of this if it turns out that there is really no such thing as junk volume? Well, in a general sense, the most important application of this would be is that you would just have a lot more freedom with your training. So for example, training frequency. So far, we advocated for higher training frequencies so that you have higher quality workouts. Maybe you can actually just choose your own training frequency solely based on your personal preference. So if you want to do a bro split and just completely annihilate a muscle group once a week, you can do that. And if you prefer to do lower volume for a given muscle group and train it four to five times a week, you can also do that. Now then the concern could be, of course, that maybe your total tonnage will be lower if you just train it one time a week because you will be able to perform less reps or you will have to reduce the weight compared to training it more frequently, in which case you will be able to use higher weights or do more reps. Well, then the solution is maybe just compensate for it by doing a few more sets. And then, of course, the next concern will be, well, then how long will I have to be in the gym if I'm compensating by doing more sets? I mean, will I be in the gym for three hours? Well, just use shorter rest periods in that case. Earlier, we were advocating for longer rest periods because that will enable you to have a higher performance. But maybe you can just use shorter rest periods because overall, the total tonnage is what matters and not the absolute performance. And then the next concern, if you think about it, is that, well, my performance will suffer if I'm using short rest periods, because the point of using long rest periods is that my performance will be higher. Well, then just reduce the weight in between sets, and then you will be able to get higher reps, and your total tonnage will be sufficiently high again. And then, of course, the next concern is if I'm reducing the weight, then my tonnage will be lower again. Then again, just compensate by doing more sets. So it's kind of a circular argument at that point. But the main take home message of this entire discussion is that maybe there really is just no such thing as junk volume and you don't have to be super concerned about your performance and the quote unquote quality of your workout. Because as long as the muscles are under load for a sufficient duration, then you're going to get the growth that you would eventually get if you were to chase performance. Now, there are a couple of real life caveats and practical considerations for which it's probably still worth training as if there was such a thing as junk volume because by focusing on performance and focusing on your strength increases across training days and across the weeks, that is a really good way to monitor if you're actually adapting to your training stress and if you're reducing the weights all the time to keep the total tonnage at bay or if you're using special training techniques like prop sets, then it might be difficult to monitor if your current training stress that you're exposing yourself to is actually the right amount for you. But these are all things that I want to cover in future videos. But for now, let's just entertain the thought of whether there's really such a thing as junk volume or tension, mechanical tension over time is all that matters. And let me know what you think actually. Do you think there is such a thing as junk volume or really as long as you put enough mechanical tension on this dumb piece of meat, which is the muscle, then you're good to go. So let me know what you think. If you like this video, drop a like, uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for future goodies like this. And with that, see you next time.